Hey there, thanks again for joining me. Um, it's good to be here again with you. We're looking at uh, the history of the Christian Reformed Church and how the Christian Reformed Church has approached the area of um, human sexuality. Um, and in my last video, we looked at some of the ways that the uh, sort of some big picture ways that the Christian Reformed Church has been faced with the topic of human sexuality, including homosexuality, but also things like polyamory and transgender questions, um, um, gender dysphoria, and all of these sorts of things. I pointed to a couple of specific events in the history of the CRC, and I've also looked at some of the broad brush um, cultural, um, cultural trends. Um, today, what I want to do in this video, I want to uh, I want to take you to a couple of um, a couple of other specific events and just unpack them. One of them is the I want to go into just a little more detail about the background of the Human Sexuality Report, and then I want to talk about an issue or an event that happened in oh late 2020 or 2021, and how that has um, precipitated the Christian Reformed Church facing these issues in uh, what I think are very critical ways and, and, and ways that probably are watershed moments. So, but before we get into that, um, we got to do a little insider baseball because, um, you know, I've been, I've already caught myself using terms and language that maybe is not familiar to everyone. So let me, let me just take you through some, some terms and some uh, phrases that will, that have already come up and that will probably come up again. The first is this, um, classes. A classis is really a regional leadership meeting. It's a gathering of the leadership of churches that are from a, a specific region. And that region is called a classis. And so most properly speaking, classis is actually a meeting, but it's also a region. It's also a certain area. So Sunny Slope Church is a part of what we call classis Columbia. And that means that we are made up of churches from Oregon and Washington, Southwest Washington or Central Washington and uh, one church in Idaho as well. These churches together form a classes and these classes meet together to make leadership decisions, to encourage one another, uh, to work together for, for common ministries. Um, classes Grand Rapids East is a is one of these classes, and it's located in the city of Grand Rapids, Michigan, and it's made up of, as it as the name suggests, some churches on the uh, east side of Grand Rapids. Um, this church has come to prominence because they have been advocating for mo uh, this classes has been advocating for um, a what what we're going to call a revisionist position. That is, they are pushing to change. The official position of the Christian Reformed Church to be more inclusive of um, same-sex uh, marriage and same-sex activity. So that's um, that's classes Grand Rapids East. They will come up over uh, a number of times. Neeland uh, or Neeland Avenue is another term that will um, that will that you'll hear from time to time when it comes to how the Christian Reformed Church has faced this issue. Neeland Avenue is a Christian Reformed Church that is located in Classis Grand Rapids East. They are a specific congregation within Classis Grand Rapids East, and they are uh, they are known and their sort of claim to fame is that they are a church that um, and I'll say more about this in a minute. But they are a church that ordained a uh, an individual who was in a same-sex marriage, they ordained this person to office. And that was, in a lot of ways, that was a shot across the bow. That uh, that triggered a lot of reaction within the broader Christian Reformed Church. And so um, you'll hear sometimes people talk about Neeland, just as a, as a noun like that, and or Neeland Avenue. Um, I'll say more about that in a minute. An overture is, is essentially, it's a request. It's a request that a church makes of a classes or that a classes makes of synod, which I'll explain in just a moment. And it's it's simply asking the church or it's asking the classes to do something. And um, so an overture is, is just a request. It's a, it's a formal request for action. Um, synod is, uh, and this is one I've already used this term quite a number of times, Synod is the annual leadership convention of the Christian Reformed Church. It's a gathering of 
uh, of leaders, from, representatives from every classes that meets together in usually in Grand Rapids, Michigan for about a week in uh, early June. And the Synod makes important decisions that generally speaking affect the entire denomination. So they make um, doctrinal decisions. They make, um, sometimes they, they approve uh, reports that make um, ethical decisions and ethical, they take ethical positions. Um, there's a whole lot more that goes on to it, but essentially that's, that's for our purposes, Synod is the leadership convention, the leadership meeting within the Christian Reformed Church. Um, part of what Synod does is it forms and it, and it acts on recommendations by study committees. A study committee is a committee of about 10 or 12 people that Synod appoints to look at a particular topic and a particular issue, to study it in depth, to make a report to the Synod and to the broader denomination. And, and then Synod has to either adopt those recommendations or not. And then once they're adopted, they become part of the sort of, you might say, part of the fabric of the denomination. They are meant to become part of what, uh, what the church holds to and, um, and how, what the church believes and, and how the church acts. So study committees, they usually meet for about three years. Over the course of three years, sometimes it's a little longer. And they make recommendations on uh, relevant uh, issues facing the church. The Human Sexuality Report is a report that was put together by a study committee. And in this case, the Human Sexuality Report is making recommendations about uh, a biblical understanding of human sexuality and human gender. This report, um, well, I'll say more about some of the particulars in a minute, but you'll sometimes hear it referred to as the HSR. And that's just a way of talking about the Human Sexuality Report. It's a study committee report that um, is before the denomination uh, to be adopted or not in 2022. Now, I wanna look at two events that uh, sort of happened simultaneously. They kind of happened around the same time. And, um, and they both have, and they both will have, and, and have had a very significant uh, effect on the life of the denomination and will have an effect on the future of the Christian Reformed Church. So in 2016, um, I touched on this in the last video, in 2016, Synod commissioned a report on human sexuality. They said, we're in light of all of these issues that the culture is, is wrestling with, and in light of where the Christian Reformed Church is, we need to, um, to, to essentially provide an updated report that takes into account many of the changes that have taken place since 1973. So the, the mandate of that report was this, to articulate a foundation-laying biblical theology of human sexuality that pays particular attention to biblical conceptions of gender and sexuality. The central aim of this theological task will be to provide concise yet clear ethical guidance for what constitutes a holy and healthy Christian sexual life, and in light of this, to serve the church with pastoral, ecclesial, and missional guidance that explains how the gospel provides redemptive affirmation and hope for those experiencing sexual questioning, temptation, and sin. I have to laugh a little bit when it talks about providing concise yet clear ethical guidance because the report was nothing but not, nothing uh, concise at all. It, it clocked in at, uh, I think, 176 pages. So it was very comprehensive. It was a very lengthy report. And what you'll notice is that the, re the report was not just uh, about taking a position on the question of homosexuality. It was intentionally designed to be much broader than that. It was intended to look at um, all kinds of issues sort of that are interwoven with human sexuality. So um, they focus on gender, uh, transgender questions. They focus on pornography, polyamory, human um, um, cohabitation, sexuality outside of marriage, all these questions, singleness, all of that um, factors in. Um, and, the, and the report then is to give advice and guidance on, uh, on, these, uh, on these topics. Um, it's in, it was intended and it was uh, supposed to be pastoral in its approach. That is, it's supposed to be sensitive to those who are experiencing these sorts of challenges, questioning sin, temptation, and so on. Um, and yet it was uh, supposed to promote a, um, a, a way of, of holiness in the area of sexuality. A couple of things that are worth noting in the report, um, one of them being uh, that um, 
the report, the, the committee was required to be made up of all people who affirm the traditional position on the, uh, the, the traditional Christian form position on sexuality. In other words, to be on the committee, you had to affirm the conclusions of the 1973 report. With one exception, there was um, a promoter fee day who was supposed to be on the committee, who was on the committee, that was meant to be sort of a devil's advocate. Now, this was controversial because there were people that said, well, if you have people who already are coming at this with their sort of four, um, their, 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 uh, their conclusions in advance, that's not going to be the, the most effective way to have a report. You're just going to have people that essentially reiterate what it is that they already believe. So there, there were people that wanted it to be a more diverse um, committee that included people who were on the other side. Um, so that's why they, the, uh, that, that promoter fide position was added. They said, okay, well, let's put someone on the committee who, is, who will function as a devil's advocate. Now, there's differing, again, differing opinions on that. Some people, you know, like some people say, well, if you've got people who already are, are contradicting and don't believe in the, the historical position of the CRC, that's only going to be uh, ensuring that the CRC gets away from, from orthodoxy. And so, so there was discussion about that and, um, and controversy around that, but, um, but that's, a, that's what the committee was all about. The committee reported back to Senate each year. Uh, the final report, as I said in an earlier video, came out in November of 2020 supposed to be discussed and uh, debated at 2021, Senate of 2021, but the pandemic delayed the report until 2022. That means that, um, what are we, we're in um, almost in April, so April, May, June, about three months, a little over three months, um, actually a little over two months, I should say, about two and a half months, the Christian Reformed Church will be meeting in Grand Rapids, Michigan, uh, June 10th through 16, and they will be uh, debating and discussing the recommendations that are made in this report. Now, the report is significant enough. It deserves its entire, it, it's its own video. I'll put that together um, and that will be a separate video. I'll walk you through what the report um, concludes and what it studies and some of the observations that it makes. As I said, it's a very lengthy report. It's um, yeah, 176 pages, I think it is. So um, I'm not going to get into all the details of it here. I'm just going to say that this year marks a sort of watershed moment. What the what the what Synod does with this report will have uh, potentially very long-lasting implications for the Christian Reformed Church, um, up to and including um, a. I don't want to call it a split necessarily, but there could be a, a sizable portion that um, decide to form their own denomination or decide to align with a different denomination, depending on which way the report goes. So um, that is a that is a potential uh, potential outcome here. Um, the report comes. Uh, and, and, and wrestles with the same question with in a more particular way. What does it look like for the Christian Reformed Church to follow Jesus in matters of sexuality? So we've, th I mean, this becomes a thematic question, right? And it's one that every Christian has to answer in one way or the other. But in particular, this report asks the question, how do we as a denomination, as an organized church, how do we, um, how do we live out our calling to be obedient to Jesus when it comes to human sexuality? How do we do it in a way that is compassionate and yet truthful? And, uh, and that's what the report is really trying to, trying to uh, figure out. Um, we'll get to some of the particulars later, but here's the, here's the next event. So that's the first event that, that has been taking place. That's been unfolding. But while that was all happening, in fact, this was just a few months before the, um, the, the human sexuality report was, was made public and was distributed to the churches, uh, June of 2020, Neeland Avenue uh, ordained a member who was in a committed same-sex marriage. They ordained this person as a deacon, and that was a violation of the Christian Reformed Church's longstanding position on marriage and sexuality. Uh, when word got out about that, it became very, very controversial. There were very uh, people who were very upset uh, because they felt that Neeland acted um, outside of the bounds of what Synod has said, and they violated what we call our covenant, our church order. Um, our, our church order is, is sort of the, 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 lack of a better term, the rules that we all agree to follow and to live by for the denomination to sort of live in, in a healthy relationship. And Neeland essentially said, we're not going to follow what that is because we disagree. Now, they had a reason. 
And the reason itself became very um, controversial. They essentially said, well, the recommendations that the Christian Reformed Church has made on human sexuality, and by that they were referring to um, the report in 20, uh, 2002, they said those are not actual church order. Those are really pastoral advice. That the, That's pastoral guidance. It's not you might you might put it this way just by way of analogy they said you know what that's not really law that's more wisdom and we disagree with the wisdom of it and so we are free to act contrary to the advice of synod that's that was the rationale so if church order is the law if church order is the rules that we agree to live by um, pastoral advice is seen as um, you know practical wisdom and how you live that out but there's a little more leeway that's how Neeland interpreted that um but, but that did not sit well with most churches. In fact, there was really an outrage uh, over this. And, um, and many classes, uh, including Classes Columbia, uh, wrote overtures um, to ask Synod to take corrective action. Now, the kind of corrective action varied from classes to classes. But, it, but my point is that many churches asked Synod to intervene and to stop this from taking place. Well, um, the, the conditions brought about by the pandemic made this sort of a unique case because Synod did not meet in 2020 or 2021. And so there was really no opportunity for Synod as a whole to take any action. Now, the Council of Delegates, which, which meets when Synod is not in session, they did take some action. They communicated their, uh, on behalf of the denomination, they communicated their disappointment and their disapproval to Neeland. But functionally, uh, Synod did not take any action on this. And, um, and, and so, um, so Synod still has to do something with all of this. Um, and that means that that sort of brings us up to the present moment. So you have these two events kind of going side by side. You've got this human sexuality report, and then you've got Neeland that has uh, acted outside of the historical position of the Christian Reformed Church. And it's all coming to a head in June of this year, June 10 through 16 of this year. Synod is going to make very, very important decisions about what does it look like for the Christian Reformed Church to follow Jesus in matters of human sexuality. That's where we are. And the decisions that we make in June of, uh, of this year are going to have far-reaching and long-lasting implications. And that's why it's important for us to be at least aware of what's going on and personally, to grapple with this question ourselves, what does it look like for you as a follower of Jesus Christ to, uh, to seek to be obedient to Jesus in the area of sexuality? How do, you, how do you love your neighbors, your friends, your coworkers, your family members who are same-sex attracted? Um, how, do you, how does the church embrace those who experience same-sex attraction? What does that all mean? Um, that's what's going to be decided. Now, next time, uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to take us through the um, human sexuality report. I'm going to I'm going to take you through piece by piece and just now it, it's going to be a summary because there's you know I have to try to keep it sort of simple and on point. But I'm going to take you through that in the next video, and that will uh, hopefully give you a sense of what the Christian Reformed Church is recommending on this and what it means for our life together. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and um, pay attention for, uh, for new videos that are coming out um, in the not too distant future.